And that brings us on to our next fight of the evening as we take things down to the lightweight division as we have Oliver Cortez taking on Cameron Gutierrez. Both fighters will be making their mixed martial arts debuts in this next fight. Thank everyone at home that is watching on clearlifemedia.com. We are anticipating the arrival of our next fight. And here we go. As we await the arrival of Cameron Gutierrez, I want to thank everyone that is watching us live from clearlifemedia.com. We're calling the action from Texas City, Texas. And there we have him, Cameron Gutierrez, 5'9", 29 years of age, making his mixed martial arts debut here tonight, representing Pear Dam Combat Sports here out of Houston, Texas. Looking for a successful debut here tonight, Ricky. Yeah, man, first fight, looking for your, when it's your debut, it's your first fight, you only get one first fight ever. First time for everything, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to see if, if we're going to see how it goes down tonight, baby. Coming from a very experienced team in Paradigm Combat Sports, a lot of big name Houston fighters have rolled through that gym. So he's got a lot of good experience behind him in that corner. There we see the final touches for Cameron Gutierrez as he prepares to do battle with Oliver Cortez. And as you were saying, Ricky, you only get one shot to make a first impression. There we have him. Cameron Gutierrez, ready for action. Fantastic. his own, Oliver Cortez, making his way to the cage, 5'7", 20 years of age, also making his mixed martial arts debut here tonight. There we see head coach Drew Radicek leading the way for this young man. Man, second fighter for ACS tonight, and our second youngest fighter of the evening as we have the 20-year-olds going against the 29-year-olds. Really cool, bro. Debut versus debut in this matchup. Let's see who's able to implement their game plan out the gate, see what they got going on. It's their first fight. So we're going to see what is their what is their martial arts move set that they're looking to implement to get the victory tonight. Oliver Cortez hailing out of Dickinson, Texas. The ACS gym, I mean, we see a lot of fighters come through there and compete here in the Houston area. Oliver Cortez, next man up, and he is ready for action. Yeah, look like, this is looking like both fighters are looking fired up, bro. This is looking like it's going to be a really, really, really good fight. Let's hand it over to Colin Cantrell. He's making his debut this evening, fighting out of Houston, Texas, Captain 
Final instructions for these two fighters. Oliver Cortez, Cameron Gutierrez. <laughs> and this fight is officially underway. Third fight of the night, here we go, let's go. Ooh. They start already immediately exchanging right in the center. So much for a feeling out process. They throwing punches and kicks already. Ooh, very nice. Man, Gutierrez throwing the leather already. Oh, good Man, right there from Cortez. Oh, he's extended right here in the middle. Dang. Cortez answers back himself. These two are throwing down in the center of the cage. Shot it there for Cortez. Can he finish it? He's got his hands locked. It looks like he's about to finish this takedown. He's got to settle into position now. Throwing some right hands right there from Cortez. Cortez scores big, enjoying top position now. ACS known for their grappling. Very, very true. That must have been his game plan to go for the takedown in the first round, get it to the mats. He's smudging right now from this top half guard position. And Ricky, take a look right there. Hand. Sorry Coming. to interrupt you, amigo, but you we got, see, Gutierrez busted open at the top of his forehead. So where you got to cut in the opening stage of this fight. That's how it be. Sometimes there's blood, baby. These amateurs go three three-minute rounds. If you didn't know, they are not allowed to throw elbows or knees to the face, to the body. They can go to town. Yeah, there's some similarities and differences, right? The diff in the pros, you can throw elbows. In amateurs, you can't throw the elbows. But what's the same, though? Hey, the blood is still real, though. Gutierrez does a good job in scrambling his way back to his feet. And the cut is important because at the amateur level, the doctors don't have as much leniency as they do for the pros. I see what you're saying there. I see what you're saying there, Todd. And it's actually not a very bad cut. I think it's almost, almost like stop. it's not flowing that badly. So we have one minute left in this opening round. Cortez with a big four or five punch combination right there in the middle. Does a little duck to do for the escape route. Underhook and then he turns him on the defense. He's staying relentless on this wrestling. He gets him back on the floor. Does Cortez. Now enjoying this top position. He pushes right there in the top half guard. Ooh, nice Ooh sweep. Right there from Gutierrez with that Kimura grip. Now he's staying on it. Gutierrez does a good job at getting the reversal. Can he finish this straight arm bar attempt? Transitioning the double attack from Kimura to straight arm bar. In a good spot now, Ricky. Can he finish it? You're going to see right now. He's staying relentless on it. He's got the bite on the, on the arm. Oh, look, he's throwing those knees to the side. He threw one right there. From the bottom. Nice job there. Cortez, that's a heartbreaker for him. He did a good job in pressing the action to the ground, only to be reversed by Gutierrez. And this is this is how you steal a round, Ricky. I see you. Yeah, great, great first round right now. Strong finish for Gutierrez. Cortez had his moments. Gonna be a tough one to call. That's what I'm saying sometimes in mixed martial arts. Like, in that round, I think it was a toss-up again because Cortez, because Cortez, he had the early moments with the takedown in the dominant position, but then Gutierrez gets a final reversal and one more submission attempt at the end. You know what I'm saying? We'll see how these judges are scoring. I'm not a judge. I'm just over here in the commentary booth talking with you, baby. We got the best seats in the house here in Texas City. Elevate Fighting Championship 3. We thank everyone at home that's watching from Clear Life Media. Share with your friends on social media. Share with them the link. Spread the word. We got nine more fights here tonight, topped off with two title fights. And right now, we are enjoying a barn burner between the lightweights, Oliver Cortez and Cameron Gutierrez. You can't forget the damage that Cortez did at the start of the round, though. But that's how sometimes these judges can be swayed if you finish strong in the last 30 seconds, which Gutierrez did. Interesting story unfolding. We'll see how the rest of this fight plays out.
Gutierrez in the dark trunks, Cortez in the blue. A little double jab right there from Gutierrez. Working on the distance, seeing what's popping. He throws a low kick right there from a southpaw stance. A low kick comes back from Cortez. High kick attempt from Gutierrez. Nice one, too, and a follow-up one, too, from Gutierrez with the pressure. Cortez does a good job, though. He circles to the left. Now he gets back to center, and now he's got the pressure now on the wall, putting the pressure on him. It's Cortez. Both fighters taking it back to the center in this lightweight matchup. Curious to see if Cortez will try to press another takedown. That's where he's had some pretty good success. I feel like we're at the two minute mark right here. He's looking like he might look for another takedown again. If he got a takedown in the first, he'll probably go back to that again here in the second. Ooh, an exchange of right hands though. They just trade him. That's nice. A jab hook and the cross from Gutierrez and a body work into the hook uppercut. He's coming with these hands now. Whoa, I think wee. Gutierrez has found his mark. He's really getting that confidence moving now with the boxing combinations. Switch up from the southpaw stance. Oh! Left high kick, he slips. Oh, but then the Cortez slips. Oh. Man, both fighters slipping. That's just the name of the game. You gotta keep your balance and see who's gonna end up on top. Oh, well, Cortez ended up on top now in this position. Cortez doing a good job there in recovering. Both fighters slipping. Cortez did a good job of it. Taking the top position, Gutierrez, in my humble opinion, he needs to continue to create motion right here in this bottom position. You gotta be able to get up from bottom. Whatever are his favorite moves from this open guard position to try to create space, make motion, and get back up to his feet. It's been a great round so far, but now Cortez, he could be stealing it now that he got the top position and landing this ground and pound from the close guard. Let's see what he can do from this top position. Open guard now from Gutierrez, trying to disrupt the base of Cortez, but Cortez doing a good job in shutting him down. There we see Gutierrez again, going for that Kimura hip bump. Nice, he went, he went for it. What the judges keep their eyes out for is the amount of damage. So if you score the takedown, it's more than just the takedown. They want to see what you can do with it. Correct. And Cortez is doing a good job of working, staying active from the top position. He got the takedown, and he's throwing these punches to score. It's looking like a Cortez round right now. Ooh, he goes, he's looking for a little leg entanglement of Gutierrez. But Cortez keeps throwing those punches, though, and it's a good round for him. And round two comes to a close as Cortez had a submission attempt. While Cortez, I'm sorry, Gutierrez had a submission attempt as Cortez was swinging away. So if you were to give the first round with a strong finish to Gutierrez, you might see the flip side and give the second round to Cortez. If I was the coaches of these fighters, I'd be telling them, one to one, you gotta come out strong in the third round. We need this third round. That third round is always about that physical fitness, baby. Whoever's, whoever's more fit right now and able to implement their game plan in this final three minutes is gonna get this final round and may ultimately get this fight right now. Great fight. So Ricky, in fighters. your opinion, do you have a one-to-one? -one? In my opinion, do I have a one-to-one? -one? It, could, it could be one-to-one. -one. It could also be two-zero also. But it could be one-to-one. -one. You gotta go in there with the, with the, with the idea that's one-to-one -one and leave it and put it all, put it all out there in this final round now. You know what I'm saying? As the old saying goes, never leave it in the hands of the judges. Yes, sir. We'll see how these two fighters come out and answer in this final round. Always interesting to see how they respond, if they're gonna come out swinging or rest on their lead if they think they're ahead. Don't rest on the lead. Sometimes you never know, baby. That's what I'm saying. Fight a smart fight, keep your defenses on point, and get right back onto the attack and finish the round, finish this final, finish the fight hard. Third and final round. Oh, right Cortez. Hand right there from Cortez. Sits scores him down. big. And Gutierrez comes right back up and he's swinging away himself. Once again, another takedown from Cortez. Good job on Cortez with the boxing combinations right there. He stuck him with that right hand, stayed on the aggression with the combinations, ultimately just took him down to the floor. 
And now it's looking like he's really, really, really on this lead now. The momentum is in his favor. Let's see what Cortez does from this top position. Opts to step over in a modified half guard right now. Does Gutierrez have the space he needs to get up? And as soon as I say that, Cortez transitions to an even better spot. That was a really good, that was a really good transition from Cortez. Oh, but then Gutierrez with the reversal. Very nice. Good for Gutierrez to not accept that bad position and use the sweep and use the fence, his environment, to get to a good position. And now Gutierrez is on top, and he could get this round back. And that's why it's very important to simulate fight time situations. That's something that you don't train on the mats in jiu-jitsu, is that cage walk with the feet as an escape. The crafty Gutierrez taking advantage of his surroundings. And he could be stealing this round now. He's on that top, he's using that, that left arm, is controlling the body lock. Oh, but now right here, Cortez got that right side underhook. He's going to look to keep getting to his left hand. Ooh, but no. But then Gutierrez did a great job of countering that and stepping right over into the mount position. Gutierrez now from the mount. Let's see what he can do with it. We're approaching the one minute mark of the final round. So see if he can finish strong. Cortez trying to. Bring alone the action with that body lock, but oh man, there's there's 60 seconds left in this fight. Because Gutierrez got dropped in the opening sequence, Gutierrez is still gonna need big moves right now to get open. Oh, but see, right there, Cortez, he stayed in the fight and he he reversed the position. And, and the tide has turned once again, Ricky. Oh man, yeah, this has really been a great fight. Both fighters really showing that, that, that fight in them, that will to win. And Cortez, though, he on top now. He's really looking to empty the tank with a big finish right now in this final 20 seconds. Full mount, and he's scoring punches. He continues to throw these punches over and over, back and forth. So many punches from, from Cortez. This is a big finish for him, bro. This is looking really good for him. Oh, and now he flattens him out. And Oliver Cortez and Cameron Gutierrez go to the decision. Good fight. Did Cortez do enough to steal the round? It's gonna be interesting to see what the final decision will be. I would probably have to give it to Cortez, two to one. A lot of credit to both fighters and credit to Gutierrez for showing a lot of heart, but it might be Cortez's night. The 20 year old out of ACS Mixed Martial Arts, head coach Drew Radicek, feels that he did enough to earn the victory. Yeah, that was a great fight from both fighters. A lot of, lot of grappling exchanges in that second and third round right there. Actually, the whole fight, they were doing a lot of grappling, but for sure in that, in that final sequence, that final round, a lot of back and forth. But ultimately, Cortez finishes on top with the final flurry of punches. That's the last thing the judges see. That might have got him the nod right there at the, fight, at the very end. Arguably, the fight of the night thus far. We're only three down with nine to go, Ricky. It's been a heck of a night of fights thus far here in Texas City for Elevate Fighting Championship number three. If you are watching at home on Clear Life Media, be sure to share the link with your friends. Spread the word. Let them know that we got a main event title fight coming up between Anthony Torres and Kevin Martinez. And you just got done seeing one heck of a barn burner between two lightweights in Oliver Cortez and Cameron Gutierrez. Yeah, that was a great fight. That was a great fight. Everyone's coming through tonight to fight. Let's hand it over to our announcer, Colin Cantrell. Ladies and Cortez wins his mixed martial arts debut. Excellent fight. A lot of good experience earned for that young man. 20 years old, Ricky. Yeah, that was a good, good win for Cortez. He really earned it right there. That was a, that was a good win. That was a good win for sure.
Sure, promoter Chris Lopez. Much respect Lopez. to both fighters. Much respect to both fighters, for sure. Sure, they impressed promoter Chris Lopez, and sure we'll be seeing a lot more of both fighters in future MMA fighting championships, especially with performances like that. For sure, for sure, for sure. That was a great fight.